Mark, turn to Mark chapter 4. And we'll be following along in Mark chapter 4. There's five parables in Mark chapter 4. And here they are. Here are the parables. Now, uh, except for the first one, I've kind of given them these names. But there's the parable of the sower. And we've discussed that. We've discussed, I'm not going to go into detail with the parable of the sower, but you know the sower sows the seed on the different kinds of ground and, it, and, and then the effect that the ground has so that some seed produces and some doesn't. And it's half talking about the hearts of men and how men receive the word of God. That's what the parable of the sower is about. It's about spreading the word, receiving the word, and the results that follow. Now these parables that follow the parable of the sower are along those same lines. The parable of the lamp, of the measure, of the farmer, and of the mustard seed. So I want to go through those parables with you here this morning from Mark 4. If you have your Bible open to Mark 4, you'll be able to keep up with me. Look at verses 33 and 34. This is the end. As he got through telling these parables, it says, With many such parables spake he the word unto them, as they were able to hear it. You know, you may know exactly what someone needs to hear, but if they're not ready to hear it, you just soon talk to a brick wall, wouldn't you? They're not ready. And you, we teach people as they are ready to hear it. And we're not going to do much good talking to people about things they don't want to hear. But we might be able to plant some seeds into their thoughts. And that's what Jesus did with these parables. But maybe they weren't ready to hear the truth right out of his word. But let me tell you this story and think about that a while and then make this parable and see that kind of prepares them then to receive the truth behind that parable. So as they were able to hear it, and without a parable spake he not unto them, and they that were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. His disciples were ready to hear. The others, I'll just tell you the story and think about that. And then later maybe we can explain it to you. John 16, verses 12 and 13. Jesus said to his disciples, I have many things to say to you. You cannot bear them now. He said, when the spirit of truth has come, he'll guide you into all truth. And so what we do, we try to teach people things that they're ready to hear. And we just really can't take the Bible and pound it onto someone. So you got you to get this. If they're not ready to hear it, you're, you're, not, you're not doing any good with that. They've got to be able to be willing and ready to receive it. And so that's one of the lessons we learned from Christ on these parables. Now... He says, unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. The, the mysteries of the kingdom. These are things that God has hidden from us until we're ready to hear. But I give you a hint about them. This, this little parable, this, this comparison. Think about that, and you'll open your hearts to receive the truth after you, you consider this for a while. And we learn what a parable is here. Mark chapter 4 in verse 30. Now this is the King James Version, okay? King James Version. Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God, or with what comparison shall we compare it? Now look at that same verse in the American Standard Version. It's translated a little different. Here's what it says. How shall we liken the kingdom of God or in what parable shall we set it forth? That's what a parable is. It's a comparison. Just like this. This is comparing sin to trash. What do you do about sin? What's God do with sin? What, what do you do with your trash? So it's a little comparison here. And that's what these parables are. They are comparisons. And they are comparisons that set forth the truth of God's word. 
So that's what we're looking at. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about parables. Now let's look at them. We got the parable of the sower. In the midst of the parable of the sower, Jesus says, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And in the midst of the four parables that follow, he says almost the same thing. If any man has ears to hear, let him hear. All of these parables are about spreading God's word and receiving it and the results that follow. And while we're very familiar with the parable of the sower, these other little parables that follow, maybe we're not as familiar with them, but you'll see how they all complement this. Here's the parable of the lamp. Now that's my, my word for it. It's in Mark 4, 21 through 22. He said unto them, A candle is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick. For there's nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Neither was anything kept secret but that it should come abroad. A candle. Well, I think it's the American Standard Version calls it a lamp. It's probably not like a little wax candle, although that, might, that would work. Put a little, you know, little wax candle coming in. But it's probably like a little oil lamp where you light the wick to the oil lamp and you bring it in. And what's the purpose of that? Well, you don't bring it in. Hide it under a bushel. You know, we get, hide it under a bushel. No, we sing. That's using that same illustration, talking about how that we are to show forth the gospel of God in our lives. But this is the gospel itself. The light coming from that candle, spreading abroad into the room, it's like that seed being sown across those fields. And the purpose of sowing is not to confine the seed, and neither is it to bring this, this lamp into a room. It's to give light to a room. And Jesus almost goes from uh, the ridiculous to the absurd. You're not going to put it under a bushel. You're not going to put it under the bed. You put it out where it can shine. And all these mysteries that God has had from the beginning of the world, they're going to be revealed. Everything's going to shine and bring light in this room of darkness where we live and we'll see and we'll understand by that. You see how that's how that parable kind of complements the parable of the sower, the spreading of the seed and the sending forth of that light. Look at the next one. The parable of the measure. I want you to go down into the marketplace and here maybe you have some, some grain or, or maybe there's somebody selling nuts, or, or maybe there's dates, and you'd say, well, I'd like a certain measure of that. And so here you're in a, you got a measure. And so you fill this measure up, maybe it's a quart or, or half a gallon or something, some kind of measure, and that's how you measure out what you're, what you're giving away. That's how you measure it out that way. You know what? You see someone over there said, man, I'd like, I'd like some of their nuts. They say, okay, but I'm going to use your measure. And you measure back to you with the same measure that you measure out. We, we have a little expression <laughs> that we use like this. It says, uh, if you want to get more out of it, you've got to put more into it. If you wanted a bigger measure, you should have used a bigger measure. If you're measuring out these muscadines over here and you're wanting these... Uh, these little sweet tomatoes, you know, over here. Well, we're going to use the same measure. If you want more, you, you use a bigger measure. We'll use your measure. But what you, you, you'll get more out of it if you put more into it. And that's the way it is with hearing God's word. Here, here's the parable. Take heed what you hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear more shall be given. For he that hath to him shall be given, and he that hath not from him shall be taken even that he hath. You want to know why some people get more out of their Bibles than others? They spend more time with it. They study it more. They think about it and meditate on it more. And so they're going to get a lot more out of God's Word than someone is that, that has a small measure and doesn't put a lot into it. But there's a danger here too. You know, I used to kind of have a hobby. 
uh, sort of a stress relief hobby, but I'd sit on a little deck outside my home in North Carolina and listen to the birds sing. And I got to where I could identify the bird by the song. You know, a lot of these bird watchers see a bird and they say, well, there's a cardinal, or there's a finch, or, or there's a sparrow. And I got to where I could listen to, oh, there's a cardinal. Oh, now I hear a finch. Now I hear a sparrow. Well, I did that for a while. And uh, as long as I kept up with it, I was pretty good at it. But then I quit doing that. And, you know, I can't hardly do it now. I'll hear a bird sing, and I say, well, I've heard that bird somewhere, but I can't tell you what it is anymore. It, it, it got away from me. And, you know, a lot of things you've done, the same thing. It gets away from you if you don't use it, doesn't it? You might be real good at it, but if you, you don't use it much, it's going to get away from you. And God's Word's like that. Uh, if you don't put, your, put something into it, even what you have will slip away from you. Well, that's why we won't keep going to church. That's why we want to go to Bible class. That's why we want to go to gospel meetings. and they, We want to keep it coming because we know if we keep it coming, we'll get more out of it. But if we let it slip, even what we get is going to get, going to get away from us, isn't it? All right, let's look at the next parable. I call it the parable of the farmer. I might call it the, the second parable of the sower. Because he calls him a sower here. So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day. And the seed should spring up and grow up. He knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately they put it in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Uh, Mike can tell you about that. It, it's an investment to put in a crop, isn't it? I tell you, you've you got an Now, I see this, and I, I don't know if Mike does this or not, but I'll tell you, when I've seen a field, and it has been planted... And I can tell they planted, planted a crop out there, but I don't see anything. And then a few days later, I'll see these little green rows. Maybe they're the little blades of corn or the little bean sprout, and I just see them all across that field. And if it's one of Mike's field, I said, boy, I bet when Mike sees that, that feels so good. That seed, I put all that money in there, and it's working. It's wor How'd that seed do that? Well, now, look, I have studied plant science. I used to have a career in agriculture and we know a whole lot about seeds now a lot more than they did but i tell you what we can't do we can't go we can't make a seed we can't get into a laboratory and put everything together and wrap it all up and put a little shell on it and put it in the ground and, and nothing will grow we don't know how to do that um secure how's that song go Secure is life for mortal man. God holds the truth with his, in his hand. Though men may search, they cannot find, for God alone does understand. We don't know how to impart life to a seed. We don't know how it works. We know this. If we'll put it out at the right time and the right depth, and have the soil ready in the right conditions, then we can just go to sleep. And wake up and look at it and go to sleep again. We've got a few days. Next thing you know, we're going to have a field full of crop growing and when it's ready we'll harvest it and we don't have to understand how that's working in that seed to benefit from that we don't always understand how God's word has effect <coughs> excuse me on the human heart we know this we can teach it Others can receive it into their hearts. And it might be that we've taught someone something that didn't, didn't seem to take, didn't seem to have any effect. Well, just go on. You've done your part. Have a good night's sleep. Wake up next morning. After a few weeks, after a few months, you might see that seed come forth. You don't know how that works. But God's word is living and active and powerful. We'll do our part in spreading the word. God will do his part in giving the increase, won't he? Well, as the parable, the 
Second parable of the sower, maybe you ought to call it. Now there's one more, the parable of the mustard seed. Uh, if you plant uh, turnips or um, cabbages, they're all in that mustard family. That little seed, uh, a mustard seed, I tell you, it's a tiny, tiny little seed. Just no bigger than a grain of sand. But um, this mustard plant, he, this is about a fellow that's got his garden, and he's got all these seeds. And, and he looks, and the smallest seed is this little tiny speck of a mustard seed. And he plants that mustard seed out there, and, and his carrots start growing, his tomatoes will come up, and, you know, his watermelon vines grow. But that mustard, give that time, boy, oh, it'll sprout up, and it'll send out branches, and it'll be so big that uh, even the birds can come and light in the branches of that little mustard seed. It'll be the tallest, biggest herb in the garden from the smallest seed. Okay, here's the parable. Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or what comparison shall we compare it? It's like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all herbs and shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. I thought of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Remember that great image he dreamed with a gold head and the breast of arms of silver and the belly of thighs of brass and the legs of iron and feet of iron and miry clay? You know what happened? A stone. In this dream now, a stone made without hands rolled off that mountain and smoked that image in its feet. And the image fell. And then that stone started growing. And it grew into a mountain. And it grew until it filled the whole earth. Nebuchadnezzar says, Daniel, what does that mean? He said, that stone is the kingdom of God. And it is going to be greater than all the kingdoms have ever been of man. And it'll fill the whole earth. Kingdom of God starting there in this, this, this place, way off in the Mediterranean, this little bitty backwater country of Israel and those few disciples. And yet that small beginning has grown to the churches all over the world. It's right here in, in Warren County. Uh, we're worshiping. We're part of that. And it keeps growing. Fills the whole earth. Just because it starts small doesn't mean it stays small. It grows. Kingdom of God is just like that. So there's the, there's the four parables. It's all about the spreading forth of the word, how it's received, and the effects that follow, aren't they? And I was reminded of 1 Corinthians 3, 6 through 8. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So neither is it he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase, for we're laborers together with God. It's not he that planteth or he that watereth. Listen, don't go around calling the preacher reverend. He, he's not so reverend. God's reverend. God gives the increase. Praise God. Not man. Isaiah 55 and verse 11. So my word, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. God's word's powerful. It'll do its work. Our job is not to make people become followers of Christ. Our job is to preach and live the Word of God. And it'll have its impact on people's hearts. God will give that increase. Will you receive it? Acts 2.41 They that gladly received His Word were baptized. You see, when you receive God's Word, it means that first you're going to believe it. You accept it. That's true. I believe that. And because of that, I'm going to make a change. That's repentance. 
I'm going I'm to be a follower of Christ. I'll confess his name before men. And he tells me to be identified with him, to be in him, to be in one with him, be baptized. So I'm going to do it. I'll come up out of that water as one of his. And I'm going to live that life. Aren't those parables, don't they teach? They teach in ways that these children, they'll hear the stories. And I'll tell you, some of them may not have gotten all the, the lesson here, but they, they'll remember those little stories. Some of you will need to think about those things too until you're ready to receive the truth that they're teaching. And then it'll have its work on you. You want to come forward if you've received his word and you want to come forward and act on it, you have an opportunity while we sing this invitation song.